Yeah, good morning, everybody. Thanks for being here. I uh, just wanted to start with an opening statement just with uh, Mohammed. Uh, that way I know that's probably a lot of on your mind, probably a lot of the questions that you have. But um, most sustained an injury, which you know, and uh, we'll have season-ending surgery next uh, tomorrow on a lower leg. So, uh, unfortunately, it's going to end his year for 2021, uh, not career-ending. Um, he'll make a, a full recovery from it. Uh, but you feel really, really bad for the young man. Uh, there is no replacing Muhammad Ibrahim. This isn't like you can just say, okay, we'll just put the next guy in. You, you can't do that. He's such a special player, um, and I think the best back in the country uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, one of the biggest reasons is he's an unbelievable person and uh, the hardest worker on this team, the heartbeat of the team. Uh, that does not mean that the, the next running back in there won't perform at a high level. Uh, you know, we have four to five backs that uh, can run our offense. And, you know, Mohammed came onto the scene because of some injuries as well. Uh, and, you know, we recruit and develop and, and keep guys in that position to be able to, to have success when their number's called. Um, but he's a special, special player and a special person. And I think you all who have spent time with him know that. You know that with him on the field. Uh, we're a better team with him on the field. We know that. Um, but that – uh, doesn't mean that we're not going to be a good team without him. And, uh, you know, it's a great challenge to our other backs, great challenge to everybody else on the team, that everybody's going to have to be able to, you know, play a little bit harder, a little bit better. But that's what a team is. You know, this is a team. This is not just one man. Um, with all due respect to anyone on our team, um, it's, it doesn't come down to just one guy. Um, but we, you know, we'll have, we'll have depth behind it, and there'll be a lot of guys that will rotate in and – yeah, I think you'll see that here moving forward. And uh, that's part of the challenge of having Ohio State right off the bat, right? You get them right off the bat. And, I mean, it's, you know, it's, and you're, you're going, man. I mean, you're going. And uh, it's unfortunate, you know. And it's a non-contact injury. And um, I think everybody saw that, you know. And it's just uh, you feel really bad for the young man uh, because of how hard he's worked. But I knew know this. Or he's not feeling bad for himself. You know, he plays the game as hard as he possibly can, and he has no regrets. And, um you know, he's got a smile on his face and getting ready for surgery tomorrow morning. But uh, just want to make sure everybody knew that firsthand. And the first thing that I got uh, in the press conference to make sure everybody knows that. So with that, I'll open it for questions. Coach, uh, with Dylan Wright, can you talk a little bit about how he got here, how you thought he played the other night, and what his potential is? Let's say that again. I'm sorry. Uh, Dylan Wright, the wide receiver. Yeah, Dalen. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Dalen, I think he's a really special talent. Uh, I think he's just scratching the surface, too. I think Matt Simon's done a great job of developing him, but I think he's done a great job of helping develop himself uh, because of the work ethic um, that he has. You know, he came from Texas A&M, and I remember that, you know, we were looking for a transfer wide receiver, and there's there's a tons, tons of people in the portal. And Marcus, Marcus Hendrickson, who's in charge of our player personnel, uh, you know, narrows it down, and then we all watch it as a staff, and then Coach Simon watches it again, and then I watch it, and then we kind of put in a little bit more of a funnel and he looked, you know, to us as one of the best ones in the portal. And, you know, he has such length, size, speed. And he, he, he still – this is only his first year of really playing football. I mean, that was his first game as a wide receiver playing multiple meaningful snaps. And he's just scratching the surface of where he can go. Um, you complement that with Daniel Jackson, who's a really young player who's coming along, you know, coming along. And then you get Crab back and you start to look at that, you know, that, that core and you start to see a lot of – uh, similarities from what we've had. Um, but he's a really good player, and he's a wonderful person. I mean, he loves football. I mean, Dalen Wright loves football, and he loves to work at it. I think that's what makes him special is how hard he works at becoming a really good player. Um, you know, and when I say he loves football, I, I love to say that about kids these days. I love when they love football. I can say that they love football. He loves football. How is uh, Mo handling the – this emotional side of it. Yeah, uh, the question is, how's Mo handling it? Um, you know, I just as you would assume, Mo Hamid Ibrahim handles it. He's got a smile on his face. Um, you know, everything happens somewhat for a reason, he feels. And, um, you know, it's unfortunate. I mean, he's he's disappointed, right? I mean, he's worked incredibly hard. Um, shoot, we've worked incredibly hard to make sure that, you know, he's he's healthy. Um, but it's, it's football. You, 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 you can't control the injuries. Uh, when you get onto the field and you're playing in games. You can you can do everything you can, not give them reps, not have them play in spring game and not have them do things in training camp, but on Saturdays or Thursday nights, you got to let them play. And, you know, he's got a great um, – he, he's got a great 
sense about him right now and a great presence about him. Uh, again, he's he's obviously not happy with what happened, but he's been able to to deal with it. And there's going to be flood of emotions. I mean, there's, there's when people get hurt like that and your season's gone, there's a, there's a grief process to that. Excuse me, that I think we all you know have seen in young people. Um, but he's doing really good. You know, he's got he's completely optimistic. Uh, he's got a great you know great presence to him. So. Um, but you know, even even when he you know you went in there and, and you checked on him at halftime, he's got a, you know, or I, after the game, he, he's got a smile on his face. Says, I'm, I'm gonna be just fine. Whatever it is, I'm gonna be just fine. You know, he's deep in his faith, which I think a lot of people know, and um, he keeps that at the core. He's gonna be just fine. You know, but again, disappointed. But uh, uh, got a, he's a heartbeat of this team and he's a leader of this team. So he he is he's leading people. I mean, yesterday at practice, he's coaching up the running backs. I mean, he's. You know, it's it's what row the boat's all about. You put your oar back in the water and you just go. And it's it's unfortunate. We don't get to dictate what storms come our way. We don't get to dictate that. Uh, but we do get to dictate if we keep our oar in the water, and he keeps his oar in the water. Ever been around a running back that's suffered a torn Achilles and just how tough is it to come back from that specific injury? Uh, well, you know, his his injury, um, you know, I mean, it's it's pretty standard. You know, when you're talking about it, it's it's pretty clean. So I mean, he's going to be able to get it fixed and 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 make a full recovery. You know, um, I think that's 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 what everybody wants to be able to have at this point. Make sure that he can have a full recovery. And you know, whether he comes back or goes to the NFL, that's that's a choice he'll make. You know, not now, but later. And he doesn't need to make that right now. Nor does anyone need to put pressure on him to make that decision whatsoever. Uh, he needs to be worried about getting healthy and making a full recovery. Which, you know. Four to six months, he should. You know, he, he's just a violent player. He's a violent player, and uh, he plays the game the right way. I mean, that's why he has no regrets. Uh, you asked how he feels. I mean, he doesn't have any regrets of how he, uh, how, he how he, you know, basically has no regrets because he plays the game the right way. Plays it so hard, doesn't take anything for granted. Just goes, and uh, you know, but he should be able to make full recovery. How much did the run blocking of your tight ends feel the ground game on Thursday? I thought our tight ends did a really good job. I thought Coach Keith. We showed multiple plays of Coquif, uh, examples of why runs came out, uh, why we had success in the run game. I thought Brevin Span for it has gotten better. Is there room to grow? Absolutely, uh, but I think he thought he got better. Uh, you can see him playing with a little more confidence, and that, that's what it is. When you have a lot of guys who haven't played a ton of football, uh, meaningful football, and then put them in an environment like that with the fourth-ranked team in the country, and uh, and watch him play that well, uh, that that builds confidence. And that's we had a lot of guys build a lot of confidence confidence from Thursday night. You mentioned Kai and Bucky a lot over the last month with the four-game redshirt rule. Is there much thought to giving them a look here in September yet? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I mean, ab- absolutely. I mean, every every back is going to be able to get a look. Um, but I, I'm not I'm not interested right now at this point of, you know, four games, not four games. Um, you know, every one of those backs can play football. And whoever the best ones that complement each other really well from this point forward, they're going to play. Uh, but, again, it's still competing with each other. They've got to compete. They got to keep competing. I and mean, there's five backs in there. I mean, you, you look at Cam, or you look at uh, uh, Trey Potts, and you know everybody knows what Trey can do. But Trey's gotten a lot better, and I think you know Trey's going to be able to take a lot, a lot of that load upon himself, but not all of it, right? And and then when you look at you know Cam Wiley, you know he's got to continue to get better and and play lower and do some other things. Um, you got Kai Thomas in there. Bryce Williams has played a ton of football for us. I mean. In 2018 at, at Wisconsin, and not only that, in Miami of Ohio, rushed for 150 yards um, when we had some backs go down and then, you know, played all year in 18, and especially that Wisconsin game that we all remember. Um, and then Bucky, you know, I mean, Bucky's, you know, Bucky's a really talented back. He's just young, you know, so, I mean, he hopefully we were able to get him in the mix as well. But Kai Thomas is a guy that has that type of physicality too. Um, and, again, we have, we, have, we have a lot of numbers. It's just you haven't seen a lot of them because Muhammad's been so good. Right. So, uh, but again, this isn't, I don't feel like it's just, okay, uh, just put the next guy in, we'll be fine. You know, we're going to be fine, but we got to keep developing those backs because when you lose the best back in the country, and that, that's complete respect to Mohammed, I mean, he is phenomenal. Uh, I haven't been around any like him. Uh, close, not like him though. Uh, but who's to say as we continue to develop these guys that one, two don't emerge just like Mohammed in a few years, that this is the defining moment for them as they start their career. Uh, PJ, when you look back at the Ohio State game from a defensive standpoint, what kind of stands out and what sort of fixes do you look for? Yeah, I mean there are six there are six massive plays, right? And I think we, you know, there's there's uh, two MAs on that. You know, there's a, 
you know, we 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 don't we don't go out with a uh, a screen player in man coverage. Which you do that, there's nobody to cover the back, and you do that, everybody's in man coverage. I mean, there's nobody to tackle the guy. So um, you know, it's a good call by them. But we, you know, I mean, we just we just we have an MA there, and then um, uh, the run. You know, they're a little bit misaligned, and when they come out, it's again uh, an MA where we don't we don't make the play. Um, and then, you know, I look at a lot of things. Is it personnel? Is it scheme? Is it coaching? Is it a matter of a mix of all of them? But there are some personnel matchups that we got into when we lost uh, Howden and then, you know, uh, we lost Flip uh, for a little bit, you know, and then we, we had some personnel issues, and they did a good job of exposing it. Um, you know, do everything you can with depth and do everything you can to keep the top on the coverage. But when you got receivers like that that can run by the top of the coverage, it, it's going to be pretty easy. And one of the deep overs, we don't get enough depth at the nickel position. Um, you know, so when you look at it, I thought we played really well for a lot of the game. But when you look at the explosive plays, and it's not just – I think we tied in what we call explosive plays. We tied. But our explosive plays, on average, were 28 yards in explosive play. Theirs was 59 yards in explosive play. That, that, that is the major difference in the game. And, but that's why they're Ohio State. I mean, look at all the wins they have. There's explosive play after explosive play after explosive play, and that's how they get 50, you know, 50 60 points all of a sudden. Um, and, again, we, we know what we had to get better at, and we know we have a really good football team, but we had to be able to, to play better than we did in those moments to win that football game, and, and we didn't. So. What is Howden's status? Oh, he's good. He'll be fine. Were you surprised that you weren't able to generate more pressure on, on the quarterback? Well, I mean, you know, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul, right? So everybody wants a little more pressure on the quarterback, but then you're playing single high man coverage against the top four receivers maybe in the country. So, I mean, um, you know, when we did generate, you know, one man, you know, one man blitzes, uh, we did move him. We got him out. We just didn't get any sacks. But the ball was out of his hand so quickly. And part of the reason is their wide receivers can move down the field and, and gain so much ground. Um, you know, the ball comes out of the hand pretty quickly. And they did a good job with the nakeds and the boots and, and the movement of the pocket. And they had a good balance to them, running the football, uh, plus throwing the ball, plus with the screen game. They had good balance. So got to give them a lot of credit for their play calls too. Um, you know, they're a really good coaching staff. Uh, they got a really good football team and really good players. Um, but – it wasn't like, okay, the whole game plan was to play cover zero and just come after them. I mean, if we did that and didn't get any pressure, I'd be worried. Uh, but it wasn't about that. I think a lot of people, you know, go in there, hey, just put a ton of pressure on that young quarterback. That's fine. But um, you do everything you can. Hindsight doesn't exist, right? I mean, the, the, the Sunday quarterback, I mean, anybody can sit there and say, we'll do this, we'll do that, we should have done that. But that's what you do and learn from. But, um, you know, if we would have came after him, well, why didn't you keep a top on the coverage and just keep everything in front of you? You know, I mean – and it, again, there's six plays, you know, that, that they hit, and you got to give them a lot of credit. They're really, really talented. But six plays that we feel like are definitely correctable for us as we keep moving forward. When you watch Miami against Cincinnati, what stood out to? Well, they play incredibly hard. Uh, they play incredibly hard, which I don't expect anything less. I mean, come, especially coming from the conference, or the Mid American Conference, um, they've got more depth than they've ever had. Um, you know, when you start to look top to bottom on offense, defense, a lot of guys from their championship team a few years ago. Um, they've got uh, one of their safeties is really long, can cover a lot of ground, uh, but they play incredibly hard. Uh, they got down early quickly, and I think that made the game a little bit different and forced them to do some other things. Um, they've got a few transfers on the offensive side of the ball, a wide receiver that can really go. Um, you know, Sorensen, the, the, the wide out they have, I mean, I mean, he seems like he's been there forever, really reliable receiver. Um, they rotate a, rotate a lot of guys in. And, uh, again, we, we, we've got to play our best football, period. And, and that's the challenge to our entire football team the entire year was no matter who we're going to play, we have to play our best football. Um, and, you know, on Thursday we played our best football for most of the game, right, but not all the game. And uh, we have to find a way to play our best football from the start of the game to the end of the game. And that's the challenge as we keep going throughout the year. Uh, what you think of I think he's got to play a little bit lower, use his hands better. Uh, but other than that, I thought he played incredibly hard. Uh, I, 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 I'm watching a guy learn how to love football. Okay, now he didn't grow up in an environment like you and I did, like where football's part of your normal day to day life, and you love it as a kid. He, I mean, he had cricket, right, and he had rugby, which is not football, but it's similar, right? But to have that American football, that 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 culture that we all grew up in, he didn't have that. So uh, he's only played football four years, 
And what I'm watching is him learning to love the game. I mean, you watch him after he run his first one down the run and fist pumping, you know, having fun, coming off the side, you know, eyes wide open, ready to learn. Uh, I, I'm impressed with how far he's come. And this is what you wanted to be able to see in a developmental program. You want to see him in development of, of, of players. And he's developing. Uh, he's not a finished product. Got a long way to go. But I saw steps towards him making huge strides from when he left. Um, and wasn't here. Of course, he's been working on that for a long time, right, over the course of the last year and a half. Uh, and, and, and even when he, he was out, guys, a lot of you don't know this, but he never missed a practice and never missed a meeting. I mean, he was on Zoom all the time, right? And there was somebody in charge of the phone and taking it around and showing where he goes and right behind his position and in meetings. He, and you had to show your face. It wasn't like, okay, uh, no camera. And then you, he wasn't there. You know, you know, he gave it to his mom, you know, as she, as she made some food. It, that wasn't it. Uh, he, he was present and everything. So he was developing mentally and emotionally um, in the football atmosphere. But when he came back and looked the way he did, I mean, he came back and you never know when somebody comes back what they're going to look like. And uh, he lost a ton of weight, looked really good. Um, you know, his family met with our nutritional staff and why he was away of what he could do. Uh, so, I mean, he's put a lot of work in, too. It's not like he just showed back up and started playing football again. He put a lot of work in. One or two more for Coach. What were your overall impressions of Tanner's performance on Thursday? I, 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 thought, it was, I thought it was good. I thought there's a lot of room for improvement. Um, you know, just accuracy and decision-making. Um, just, just playing the position better. Uh, but I thought he led our team really well. You know, I mean, had a few drops in there. That would have definitely helped him. Um, but, uh, you know, I thought, I thought he managed the game well. Ran the offense well, uh, was a really good leader. I mean, he's been in huge moments, so that wasn't that wasn't an issue whatsoever. But there's always room for improvement. Was it the Achilles then for Mo? Yeah, you know, I, that, it's a lower leg injury. I always the specific part I always leave up to the kids, uh, just so everybody knows. Like, I'm not that I'm hiding information. I think everybody can watch the video and seen it a million times. You can create your own assumptions. Uh, I just think there's something personal uh, to the injury. Uh, of the exact specific part of what it is, that that's up to the to young man if he wants to deliver that information. Uh, my job is to make sure that you all know that he won't be returning in 2021, that he is having surgery tomorrow. So all the thoughts and prayers and so people can focus on that and, uh, and help him in a, in a recovery. Uh, but the specific injury, I always leave that up to the to the kids that's just my preference uh because of you know the, the mental health emotional health uh, what people will say how they'll say it um so if they want to rely to to give that that information out then, then they can do that did you watch some of the other games on saturday i know you went to look like south dakota for some recruiting but did you have a chance to watch some of the other big 10 teams uh, i didn't get a chance to watch many games no um, i don't watch a ton of football when i'm not doing football you can imagine that right i mean do you go home and do a broadcast at home no, I think my wife would yeah, destroy you, me. Do you tell her how well she's doing and around, you know, you know, do you go around there and evaluate her and I'm kidding, right? You and I have a really good relationship so I can say that to you, right? But uh, but it's it, it I love the game and but you know, when we go out and travel recruit, I'm working, right? And then you come back and you're on to the next opponent. Uh, you've got your players to worry about. I always keep it somewhat in the background. I mean, we're checking scores left and right, you know, Coach Sanford and I at games and and uh, that's the fun part about it. You don't know how things come about, but you see scores. Uh, I'm a huge fan of college football, right? But, um, you know, if I went home and, you know, just talked about football the entire time, you know, I think Heather would be annoyed at times too. So, um, but I, I'm sure there were some really good games. I got to see the end of last night's game. I got to see the end of that, which was, uh, you know, it's, it's great to have college football back. So, um, you know, just in general, I think everybody, you know, is, is really grateful to have it back. And that environment on Thursday night, guys, was special. And uh, just, again, want to thank our fans, thank our band, thank everybody who came out. Um, and I hope that, you know, prior to, you know, the COVID, remember we had this, we all talked about this, and I've said it at length. We all had, you know, the attendance was down and national atten attendance is down and what's going on across the country with student sections and everything, right? Remember all those articles. And then COVID hit, right, because we could all get it on our smartphone. Then COVID hit. And now that, you know, you've kind of opened college football back up and football back up and live events back up, I mean, people are just flooding uh, to, uh, to live events. And uh, it's really special. So, um, again, 2020 had us all be able to take a step back and, and realize what we take for granted, what we don't, what we need, what we don't need. And uh, I'm just glad that, you know, college football's back in the environments that it is in a safe way. Uh, and, 
that environment was really special. So hopefully we have a lot more of those as we keep going throughout the year. So thank you for your time, everybody. Roll the boat, Sky Mago Gophers. Thanks.